All right, friends. So for something different, I thought I would read Star Wars, The Force Awakens for you guys. And this will be in parts because I can only record 15 minutes at a time. So this will be part one. Look for the rest of the parts soon. So like I said, this is Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and it was adapted to book version by Elizabeth Schaefer, and the illustrations in the book are by Brian Rood. And this is based off the screenplay by Lawrence Kadzen and J.J. Abrams and Michael Arndt. Luke Skywalker has vanished. In his absence, the sinister First Order has risen from the ashes of the Empire and will not rest until Skywalker, the last Jedi, has been destroyed. With the, report, with the support of the Republic, General Leia Organa leads a brave resistance. She is desperate to find her brother Luke and gain his help in restoring peace and justice to the galaxy. Leia has sent her most daring pilot on a secret mission to Jakku, where an old ally has discovered a clue to Luke's whereabouts. And let's introduce ourselves to a few characters here. So this is Lor Santaka, I'm sorry, Lor Santeca. A wise explorer who has traveled some of the most remote star systems in the galaxy. And this is Poe Dameron. An ace pilot, Poe Dameron is a leader in the resistance fight against the evil First Order. He soars into battle behind the controls of a modern X-Wing fighter. So, this will begin to set things right, Lor Santeca said as he handed Poe the data files that contain the map. Without the Jedi, there can be no balance in the Force. Just as Poe thanked Laura, a small round droid rolled into the hut where they were meeting, beeping frantically. It was BB-8, and he had urgent news. The First Order had discovered Poe's mission. They had sent a platoon of stormtroopers to capture Poe and take the precious map. Already, they could hear the hum of ships landing at the edge of the village. You need to hide, Poe told the old man. You need to leave, Laura said. Poe and BB-8 bolted back toward Poe's waiting ship. And here are the stormtroopers. Equipped with sleek armor and powerful weapons, the stormtroopers enforce the will of the First Order. Meanwhile, wave after wave of First Order stormtroopers attacked the village. The soldiers were dressed in identical white armor. As the villagers looked at the advancing army, they saw only a synchronized force of destruction. But one stormtrooper was very different from his fellow soldiers. While the other troopers rushed to attack the village, he only pretended to fire at the civilians. That stormtrooper was known as FN-2187. It was his first battle, but as he observed the chaos that surrounded him, he hoped it would be his last. Over the sound of the attack, FN-2187 heard the rumble of a large shuttlecraft. That could mean only one thing. Kylo Ren was there. FN-2187 knew that whatever the First Order was looking for on that planet, it must be important if Kylo was attending to it personally. And here's BB-8, the loyal spherical astromech droid of the Resistance pilot, Poe Dameron. Back at his X-Wing fighter, Poe needed to get BB-8 and the map to safety, but the stormtroopers had damaged his ship beyond repair. Poe knew he had no choice. He pulled out the map and gave it to BB-8. Get as far away from here as you can, Poe said. I'll come back for you. As BB-8 rolled away, Poe ran toward the burning village to see if he could help. Oh, and here is Kylo Ren. Oh, sorry, right here. A dark warrior strong with the Force, Kylo Ren commands First Order missions with a temper as fiery as his unconventional lightsaber. What Poe saw there stopped him dead in his tracks. Kylo Ren had found Lor Santeca. You know what I've come for, Kylo told the old man. I know where you come from. Before you called yourself Kylo Ren, Lor replied. But Kylo was not in the mo mood for old remembrances. Give it to me, he snarled. Lor refused to give up the location of the map. Seeing that Lore could not be persuaded, Kylo drew his lightsaber. Poe saw what was coming and tried to fire his blaster at Kylo, but he couldn't save Lore. Kylo Ren used the Force to deflect Poe's attack and captured the Resistance pilot. Kylo and the Stormtroopers took Poe back to their massive Star Destroyer. 
On board, FN-287 removed his helmet and started putting away his gear. FN-2187, someone said from behind him. Submit your blaster for inspection. He turned around to see his commanding officer, Captain Phasma. And this is Captain Phasma. She is in distinctive metallic armor and is in charge of the First Order's legions of star troopers. She must have noticed that he wasn't firing on the villagers. The stormtrooper gave her his blaster and saluted. He knew once she ran a scan on his weapon, she would find out there was nothing wrong with it. It was only a matter of time until he was punished for disobeying orders. FN-2187 was ready to leave the first order behind him, but he needed a pilot to help him escape. And this is Jakku. A frontier desert world Jakku is home to thieves, outlaws, and scavengers. Far away from the First Order and its evil plans, a lone figure stood on the sandy surface of Jakku. The scavenger was in the middle of a field of crashed ships and abandoned military gear that stretched as far as the eye could see. Methodically, she searched through the wreckage, looking for anything she could sell at the nearby Nima outpost. The scavenger's name was Ray. That name was one of the only clues she had to her past. Ray had been left on Jakku as a child, and she barely remembered her family or anything from before her life scrounging for food and shelter. The fierce sun beat down on the scavenger's head. She had found only a few useful parts that day, barely enough to trade for dinner. But with the temperature rising across the desert's plain, she couldn't afford to stay out in the heat much longer. Ray carried her salvage to her speeder and set up for the outpost. And this is her speeder right here. For quick transportation across the junk-strewn dunes of Jakku, Ray relies on her old salvaged speeder. And salvaged means that she found a bunch of different parts and was able to put them together to make this speeder. The Nima marketplace was alive with the hustle and bustle of trade. Booth after booth of merchants offered everything buyers could want, including used droids, spare speeder parts, and even expensive desert survival gear. Ray caught a whiff of freshly cooked bloggin for sale, and her stomach rumbled. Ray quickly made her way to Unker Plutt's booth to sell what she had found that day. She hoped the old alien would give her a good bargain, but Unker was not known for being generous, or even fair. Sure enough, when Ray placed the spare parts before Unker, he laughed. Today! <laughs> You get one quarter portion. Ray knew Unker was cheating her, but after a long day, which had been part of a long month, which had been part of a long life on Jakku, Ray simply nodded and took the tiny food packet. Ray hopped on her speeder and flew home. For Ray, home was inside the wreckage of an old Imperial walker. She assumed the walker, along with all the crashed ships found on Jakku, must have been part of a battle long before. Inside, Ray began eating her dinner, savoring every last bit of food. She could never be sure when she would get her next meal. But as Ray sat in the stillness of her home, the silence was broken by a frantic beeping. It sounded like a droid, a droid in trouble. Ray ran outside and toward the noise. And let me just let show you here. So this is a Tito. And it's a small brutish scavenger who roams Jakku's vast wastelands on their semi-mechanical Lugabeast. So here's the Lugabeast, and that is a beast of burden on Frontier Worlds. Lugabeasts are semi-mechanical creatures whose faces are always hidden behind heavy armor plating. So there's that heavy armor plating there. Ray ran over a ridge and saw a little round droid trapped in a net. The net was being dragged by an angry Tito riding a huge Lugga beast. Titos often roam the desert looking for weak travelers to steal from, but Ray had never seen a droid traveling alone like that. She knew she had to help, so she called out to the Tito to stop hurting the droid. The Tito just shouted back angrily. Ray, however, was not about to back down. She raised her staff menacingly, ready for a fight. But the Tito didn't attack Ray. He just kept shouting empty threats at her. Unimpressed, Ray walked over to the droid and began cutting him out of the net. The Tito could see that keeping the droid would be more trouble than it was worth. He rode away from the pair, still shouting back at them. Now that the droid was free, Ray looked down at him curiously. Where do you come from? she asked. 
The joy beeped in response. Oh, classified, really? Well, me too, Ray teased. Big secret. Ray showed the droid how to get to Nima Outpost, then started walking home. But the droid rolled after her. You can't come with me, Ray protested. The droid beeped pitifully. Ray looked around at the vast desert and the setting sun. The droid had already proven that he wasn't great at taking care of himself. She sighed and gestured for him to follow her. The droid trailed happily behind Ray all the way back to her home. In the morning, oh sorry, in the morning, you go, she said firmly. The droid responded by introducing himself to his new friend. BB-8? Okay, hello BB-8, my name is Ray. The next morning, Ray took BB-8 to Nima Outpost. There's a trader in Bay 3. Might be able to give you a lift wherever you're going. Ray pointed to the busy landing paddock. So, goodbye. But once again, BB-8 refused to leave Ray's side. No matter what she said, BB-8 insisted that he stay with her. Tired of arguing with the little droid, Ray decided to go about her business at the outpost while BB-8 tagged along. Ray had picked up a few more spare parts on the way to the outpost. So she took them to Unker Pletz. Unker wasn't very interested in Ray's salvage, but he was interested in BB-8. Unker had heard the First Order was looking for a round white and orange droid that looked just like BB-8. What about the droid? Unker asked. I'll pay for him. How much? Ray asked before she could stop herself. Sixty portions, the alien replied. Ray was shocked. That was more food than she had ever seen in her life. But when she looked down at BB-8, she knew what she had to do. The droid is not for sale, she replied. Unker was not happy, but that didn't bother Ray. She and BB-8 simply walked away, heading back through the market. And I think I'm going to stop here for this first part. So I hope you enjoyed it so far and look for, the, for part two coming soon. Bye, everyone.